Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance, and I appreciate you joining us. You have caught me sitting in the Big Bad Ranger boat in a little tiny bass pond. We were driving across Kansas. We saw a pond on the map that looked like it would be fun. Got off the side of the highway, drove a couple miles off the side of I-70, and here we are. We're sitting in a pond, a state fishing lake in the middle of nowhere. It looks like it's maybe 80 to 100 acres, something like that. It's the middle of May, it's the middle of the day, and we're sitting in the middle of the pond. And as you see, it's not a real big pond, but we've got the big boat out here. We're gonna get after them. We don't know what we're into today. Uh, the sign says there's some bass in here. We're uh, hoping that that pans out for us. So stay tuned, guys. We're gonna see how fast we can break down this little tiny pond in a great big boat. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Otterbox, the great outdoors just got greater with coolers, dry duffels, and tumblers. Okay, so let's talk about my rig real quick. I've got, a, I've got a bobber stop right here, and as you can see, this is just a little plastic bobber stop, and I can slide it up the line. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a little tiny stop right there, and I slid it up the line. Now my tungsten sinker can slide, and it will stop where that stop is right there. I've got the Fusion 19 offset hook right here. Some guys use a straight shank flipping hook. You can do that as well. To me, it comes down to personal preference. I feel like I hang this hook a little bit less in terms of throwing it in the cover than I do with the traditional flipping hook. That's a personal preference. Most guys will go the other way around, but after doing this my whole life, the offset gap hook like that's what I do. Now, the Texas rig. You notice the, the pit boss has a little thin spot on the top and a, and a whole vein down here. So what you do is you stick it right in the center of the nose, nice and straight, right in the middle, right out where the gap in the, in the, in the bait starts. Push it all the way through, rotate it all the way around 180 degrees. So now you have this and you can see that that four out hook is gonna fit perfect. So then I take it, I fold this up poke it right through the center like that. Now you see it's right where the hook is supposed to be to keep it from snagging. I'll push it forward and skin the hook like that. And now you see I've got a nice level straight bait like that. Now with this being skinned, I can slide my fingers, throw this right in this cover, it's not gonna hang anything. That's why the big hook sets are so important though. So for guys that are just learning to bass fish, uh, those big hook sets, people think, oh, he just likes to hit the fish. No, I gotta pull this hook through this plastic. And it's also possible that I've got to jerk the sinker through his lips, so that's the other thing. So I slide my bobber stop back down right here and give my sinker just a little bit of room to free play, and that's it. That's my whole rig right there. Perfect. 20 pound trying 100% fluorocarbon right there. I've got it on a seven foot four, heavy power, fast action, St. Croix Legend Extreme, one of my favorite rods right here. Legend Extreme is exceptionally uh, crisp, a very powerful rod, seven foot four, heavy power. You got lots of oomph on the rod. And then of course the Revo Rocket. The Revo Rocket takes in uh, 41 inches of line per turn. It's 10 to one gear ratio and a drag that goes all the way down to stop. So you can set the hook and you get lots of power in it. Day in and day out, if I've got to, if I have to produce fish and there's any sort of cover in the lake, this is the outfit I'm going to grab, and it's either going to have a Texas rig on it, or it's going to have a maybe half or a little bit heavier skirted jig with the power chunk on the back of it. But one of those two will get you fish anywhere in the country you bass fish, and it's the top money maker of all time. Got him! All right, there's our first one. We'll put the poles down here. And we made contact, guys. We went up in the ditch. Now, he ain't much. I ain't going to lie to you. He ain't much. <laughs> but it's our first bite of the day. And he grabbed my little pit boss. Uh, because we don't know anything about the pond, and I knew I needed a pitch bait because all this wood cover, he's wee. And look, somebody chomped him, which makes me wonder there's somebody with teeth in here at some point. But you can see all the mud the trolling motor just kicked up right there. That's from the trolling motor of this boat, and he was up in that bush back there. And so I've got a Berkeley Pit Boss on here. I'll show you how this thing looks. Let me get it straightened back out here, and I'll show you basically how this thing looks. But uh, I've got it on a little uh, 3 8 ounce tungsten head and a 4 aught Fusion 19 hook. I'll pull this down. i got a little bobber stop on there. Pull the bobber stop down. 
And that's what my whole rig looks like right there, guys. And so it's a good looking little rig. Obviously it was good enough for that little fish. And so we've only been fishing for just a few minutes. So we're just kind of getting it figured out. But uh, we're going to sneak our way up into this inlet and we'll see. He was on this individual wood cover right here. Chomped that thing as soon as it hit the water. So we'll see what happens. See if we can pick off some others. But one thing's for sure, we're going to have to be sneaky uh, because the water's so shallow. Uh, even if these fish don't get any pressure, they're in dirt shallow water and that automatically makes fish be sneaky. The other thing that's important for me to realize is that he, uh, he grabbed the bait and ran off which a lot of times means there's more than one fish in a piece of cover. If a fish grabs it and takes off with it, a lot of times that's, that's a clue to me that there's more than one fish in there. So we'll fish around more serious here and see what else we can catch. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Peterson Toyota, Fort Collins, Colorado. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. All right guys, so where we are now, we have stuffed our way up in the inlet and there's an inlet coming in over here. And so given that there's no water in here at all, I mean depth wise, uh, around most of this whole lake, we feel like that this little channel going into here, it's six feet deep, it's the deepest water we've seen. And there's water running in, because when we drove in, we drove over the bridge. So I know there's water coming in back here as well. So we feel like that fishing this channel back into here might be a good deal, moving water. Inlets, outlets, boat ramps, dams, and occasionally bridges if they're available, right? We talk about that all the time on Fishful Thinker. And so we're gonna go check out this inlet right here because it has two things I like. It has a combination of deeper water and it has running water. So it's got a defined channel, it's got some wood cover around both sides of it. So we'll fish all of it. The beauty of fishing a small lake like this is we can fish the whole thing. We get a pretty good idea of what's here pretty quick. I can fish this whole thing in a couple hours. We're, we're one of only two boats that's here. The other boat's a little tiny hand launch more akin to my crawdad that you may be familiar with, my small boat. But like I said, we're headed to a much bigger lake in central Kansas and because of that we had the big boat with us so we thought eh, we'll pull in there and see if we can catch on our way across the state so we're gonna mess around here and see what happens but I'm gonna fish all the way into this inlet as far as I can get the boat and we'll find out and I'm gonna fish fairly quick on the way in and a little bit more thorough on the way out and that's because of boat control I can the wind is gonna let me do that easier and as we've already mentioned, the reason that I'm fishing all of this cover, I mean, there's cover everywhere. You look around, there's cover everywhere. I'm not trying to fish all of it right this minute. The stuff that I'm focused on is on the edges of the channel that's running in back here because these fish can slide right out here into the boat. They've got five feet of water, even though they're sitting in like less than two, foot and a half or two, they've got five feet of water up here and so, or underneath the boat. So that gives them a relatively secure place to sit which is also important. Oh, that's plant material right there that I hung earlier. Fish, 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 fish. Got him. There we go. All right, now that one was on that lay down right there, guys, and that one's a little bit better. Come on up in here, buddy. Now, there, hook Fusion 19 came right out, and there is numero dos. That's uh, two pitches from the last fish, and we'll set that down, and you can look right there. Look at the tail on that fish right here. This fish is chewed up. That last fish was chewed up. This is telling me these guys are just coming off the spawn right here is what I'm starting to think. And again, that's not a monster by any stretch, guys. But we've only been fishing for a few minutes. Truck's literally right there, 100 yards behind us. And uh, you can see he's beat up on the side right here and the tail's all bloodied up on him. But we're headed the right direction now. So we'll get him put back nice and pretty. And we'll let him go back to doing what he does here in Kansas. And one thing I like about 
you know, Kansas and Nebraska both, they do a really good job of making sure that even little ponds like this are available. You know, we've done shows on like the, the I-80 ponds in Nebraska and several other small ponds here in Kansas. And all of them, if you're patient and work the fishing out, they all have good fish to be caught. And you look at the wood cover, look what we're dealing with to fish. It's a great chance to, for, to go out and get out. You don't need a boat like this, guys. I'm telling you, you'd be, in fact, this boat's almost more of a hindrance in a lake this size. Uh, and this shallow, my little Coleman Crawdad would be perfect in here. The most important part of this boat right now, is, besides the storage, which is the great thing about any big giant bass boat, especially a Ranger, the shallow water anchors in the back because I'm leaving those things down. I can pitch everything I can see and reach and then I'll pick them up, move forward a little bit, pitch everything else. So uh, that's how we're getting them done. We'll be covering very little water, but covering all of it real thoroughly. And by the way, here comes some cover floating in to get us. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Lawrence. Find, navigate, dominate. Abu Garcia for life. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. Okay, so guys, if you look real quick, that last fish I just caught, if you see that lay down cross in here and that lay down cross in there, X marks the spot. If you're bass fishing and you have cross lay downs like that or, or a branch with a cro crook in it like that, you always fish that. A horizontal lay down on a stump, there's a stump right there. So where the lay down and the stump come together, another spot you always fish every time. If you're fishing wood cover, every time. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that once we rest that a little bit, like say we fish our way back in and come back out, I can probably catch another one there. Those are really critical spots that you need to make sure you fish. Any Anytime you have a cross of two big logs. One big log is great. A cross is way better. If you want to catch the most cars, you go to an intersection, right? That's what you do. Well, same thing with bass. If you want to catch the most bass, go to where two pieces of cover intersect and you'll catch more of them. And with this wind blowing, it'll keep you just, there's fish right here. Him. That's a big one there, I think. There we go. And he was in that same intersection. I think I'm pretty sure I just said we could catch another one in there. And come on up in here, buddy. And that's even another nice one. Look at that one, guys. <laughs> For being on a little tiny pond that we decided on a whim, we're going to stop by and see what we can catch. We're doing pretty good. I'm going to get Neil down here and get a hold of him. And a uh, perfect Fusion 19 hook right in the snout. He never coming off. There's my pit boss. And there's another chunk, dude. Look at that. That's two in a row, guys. I've pitched that stump. That's two in a row in that same spot right there. And the pitch bait, you can see I've got a couple different moving baits on the deck of the boat, uh, topwater baits, but the pitch bait, day in and day out of Texas rig pitch bait is going to catch you the most of them. So that's a good looking fish, guys. We'll take him all day long. Nice and gentle. I'll put her back in here. Look, you can see the watercolor, see if she'll jump. Here you go, baby. Nope, she thought about it. <laughs> there it is, guys. There's the pit boss. I've been fishing this thing since pre-production models. Uh, Mr. Pitsillos, that's for you right there. I'm so in love with the pit boss, guys, that I have a whole string of them fresh out of the mold that they never cut off the molding band. It's, it lives in my shop in the Quabba del Fishful, uh, and it stays in there all the time because that's one of my favorite baits of all time. That one happens to be the green pumpkin purple flake, and it's getting them caught right now. <laughs> and always, uh, always a uh, good bass will make multiple presentations to any spot you really like, any, you know, a lot of times a fish may not know where it's at, it may be an irritant thing, there's multiple reasons why fish will bite a bait, and you don't know what those reasons may be, so it's your job to give them every possible chance to bite it. Maybe he's on the other side of the stump and he felt something with his lateral line hit the water, but he doesn't know where it was or what it was. There's just any number of reasons why they could bite. Got him. There we go. I saw him roll on the bait and he didn't get it. And uh, there we go. Come on up in here, buddy. That's hilarious, guys. That's hilarious. Before I even unhook him, look down right there. Let me get the pole sunk, guys. Look at this thing of four sticks. Looks like a bird claw right there. 
I pitched the bait in there and I saw a big shine as he spun around and he was looking for the bait and he couldn't see it. He looked around for it a couple different times. I saw him swim a couple circles and he ain't a giant, but guys, we're doing bass pitching, flipping 101 and that's exactly what we're looking for. Another bloody tailfish here. And uh, we'll get that one put back right there. But the when I pitched the bait, it went underwater and then there was immediately a white flash as he spun looking for it. I picked up and he wasn't on it and then I saw him flash again and he still wasn't on it. And then dunk, I felt him finally, he found it and he bit it. And so it's that same pit boss we've been throwing and uh, just drop it in there and drop it straight down. And, and that's why you gotta be observant. That's where your coasters will help you as well. Cause I saw the flash, but I was patient on the hook set. It would have been real easy to just jerk cause you saw the fish. But the reality was he didn't have the bait yet. He was looking for the bait. And that also speaks to what we talked about, about how sometimes you need multiple pitches to a place. Cause if I had vacated the bait in a hurry, he may never have seen it. So I picked up on it and shook it a little bit. He spun around looking for it. He finally found it. And as soon as he found it, he bit it. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Otterbox, the great outdoors just got greater with coolers, dry duffels, and tumblers. St. Croix Rods, best rods on earth. All right, guys, those are the last stumps. If you look across here, these are the last stumps as the channel comes out and then it dumps out in the main lake right there. And uh, I'm gonna give them a good workout just to make sure. Plus they're big stumps. And there's a couple of offshore right here, off, you know, submerged I should say, that you can't see. We give this whole little section a good thorough workout. And one thing you have to constantly do is check, make sure your bait is still Texas rig, that your hook is still buried or you will snag stuff like no tomorrow. And I'll tell you one thing, you only got to set up one time on a stump like that real hard and you'll wish you hadn't have done that. And if that hook buries in it. It's one thing to swing and miss. It's another thing to jerk and hit the end of that stump with, uh, with all your might and then you're, then you're bumming. And one thing, we don't know anything about this lake and we keep talking about that, but one thing we do know is there's at least crappie in here because we saw a big dead one floating. So I'm guessing that these fish are probably got crappies as a major food source. I am surprised we haven't seen any or any bluegills either one or anything else for that matter besides carp and bass, but I'm sure there's plenty of, of bluegills in here. Fish, got him. Way over there, guys. That was a long pitch all the way across the channel. And I don't know how big he is, but he's way out there for a pitching and flipping deal. He was way over there. And he's gonna come in here. We're gonna swing him all up in one shot. <laughs> and he was all the way across. On those. See, you guys can look. There's two big ones sticking up in one shady spot where the dark stump is in between. And I barely got that guy with my Fusion 19 hook right there, guys. And there's another one. He's all scarred up too. Now guys, we hadn't been to this pond like we told you, but, uh, but all these fish have been really beat up. See the lesion on the side of this one right here? They're all short and thick. I think they're otherwise healthy, but, uh, but yeah, there you have it, guys. So pitching and flipping, paying the bills right now. We'll put him back. You can see the schmutt in the water. A little bit of algae bloom here. There he goes, guys. And on that note, uh, pitching and flipping, we do a lot of it on Fishful Thinker. You know we do. We do it. If you're a fan of the show, you know we do a lot of it because we're all about consistency. We're not necessarily always about trophy catches. We're always about catching fish. And day in and day out, there's a lot of times when pitching and flipping is a way to get it done. So we hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, you know, get a big heavy rod, some goat rope as they call it, and uh, some Texas rigs and jigs and get after them yourself. All right, guys, we stepped away from the fishing once again and join me here on the deck at La Cueva del Fishful. We're going to do some cooking. And this is a kind of a unique recipe because when I started asking around for some new recipes, this one popped up and it wasn't something I'd ever really thought of before. So what we're going to do is we're going to fry off some white bass fillets and we're going to deep fry them right here in this Dutch oven but we're gonna deep fry them in pancake batter. This is basically Bisquick style pancake batter that I mixed up with beer. I let the, I let the beer come up to room temperature. I mixed it up with beer. I added some savory seasoning to it. So first thing we wanna know is how hot is our oil. So we're gonna drop some batter in it and see what it does. See that guys? 
That's what you want it to do. That tells me that it's plenty hot. Here's my white bass fillets. This is just one white bass. I'm gonna drop all these in here in one shot. I'll use a spoon, I'll toss them around and get them all covered in this pancake batter. And because it's pancake batter, I made it a little bit thinner than it might otherwise be. And so now you see I've got everything in there all in one shot. And so I'm gonna start grabbing these out of here one at a time, shake the excess off and go right in the oil with them. And that is hot, so you have to be careful or you will be burnt. And we're gonna let those fry for about three minutes. All right, guys, they've been frying for about a minute and a half, two minutes at this point. They're already got some color to them. And one of the key things whenever you're gonna fry it, that I like to do is use a little bit of used oil and a little bit of fresh oil, mix the two together. That's how you get really good color on your fish. And at this point, they're all floating. And I'm gonna say that those are done right now. Oh man, those look good, guys. Those look really good. We're gonna drop them here on the plate. Spread them out just a little bit. And guys, that's about as simple as it gets. I don't think you can get a recipe that's any more simple. You wanna go ahead and salt it and we'll spread these out and give them room to breathe. And if you look how nice that pancake batter cooked up, guys, that is absolutely beautiful. All right, guys, hit these with a little bit of lemon over the top of it. So you might not think of using pancake batter, guys, but I'm telling you what, it makes some very, very, very tasty fish. So uh, white bass, walleyes, whatever, it does, it's not even relevant. Oil needs to be about 350 degrees. You saw I didn't even temp it, I just tested it only with a little bit of batter. Uh, make sure my batter would crisp off how I want it to do. The fish was just patted dry, thawed out and patted dry, and that's it. No seasoning on the fish or anything. I added the seasoning all to the batter ahead of time. So a Bisquick style, you know, whatever generic brand of batter, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic for making fish. If you want the recipe for this or anything else you've seen on Fishful Thinker, you can get that on our YouTube channel or at our website, Fishful Thinker. Of course, Fishful Thinker across all of our social media platforms as well. We hope you'll tune in and see what we're catching and possibly what we're cooking, and we'll see you next week. Time now for today's best catch, brought to you by Berkeley. Look at that one, guys. <laughs> for being on a little tiny pond that we decided on a whim, we're gonna stop by and see what we can catch. We're doing pretty good. I'm gonna get Neil down here and get a hold of him. And uh, perfect Fusion 19 hook right in the snout. He never coming off. There's my pit boss. And there's another chunk. Berkeley, catch more fish. Now, time out. Let me do this one more time. Oh, Chad. No. Okay, here we go one more time. Is that a rock right there? World's biggest turtle or what? A manatee. That's probably what it was. A fish? Nope. Not a fish. I think that was a fish. Fish, fish, fish. Missed him. Okay, time out. Huh. All right, cut. All right, you can cut for a second here. Okay, time out. Cut. All right, cut.